so hi. family friendly. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're Cal and Oates. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Oh. We're back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about today? So today we are going to do episode one, group buys. How did those work? Hey, that's fun. Why don't you yeah. kick us off, Mr. Cal? What is a group buy? So basically what happens is somebody has a great idea, a great, great idea for a keycap set or a keyboard or whatever. And what they don't have is a giant pile of money. So they get everybody else with similar tastes to them and uh, they band together and they make that shit happen. Okay. And so one thing that you pointed out that I think is important is why do they need a bunch of money? Sure. So generally speaking, uh, if you're going to do a keycap set, let's say, uh, which is a less good example, I think, than a keyboard. But if you're going to do a keycap set, right, you're going to have maybe a minimum order quantity of 250 units at $100 a piece. Let's say, let's just wild ass guess that it actually only costs half of that for them to take an order. So they're talking about $5,000. I think it's actually quite a little bit more than that, yeah. but but let's just say that that's where it is. So they don't have five grand to front to wait nine months on to take delivery of a keycap set or nice. if it's so a keyboard. So it kind of it works kind of like crowdfunding, where where I need a whole bunch of help to make this thing happen for this one specific goal, almost like uh, Kickstarter, right? It's just less mainstream or accepted. So, yeah, not that a bad example. It's a keep starter, and more not Kickstarter. It's a keep starter. Oh <laughs> snap! Run through Geek Hack. Oh, oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. But, but why? But why do we? Why do we do it that way instead of on Kickstarter? Right? Probably mostly because our community isn't that large. Mm -hmm. Um. So. We, we don't we don't really warrant a huge Kickstarter campaign, probably. Um, but also... Yeah, because it's a niche community, or a niche, niche hobby, really, a boutique yeah. hobby, that it, I think it doesn't exactly fit the expected uh, participation level that a Kickstarter would. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Also, there might be a really wide range, right? So you don't want to have a stretch goal... You, your stretch yeah. goals would have to be way higher than what your like primary goal is, but also there's price breaks and that's not really a thing that can be realized in a Kickstarter very well. Whereas if we all join together and agree that, Hey, at this minimum order quantity, the price will be X. But if we hit this stretch goal, the price will go down to Y for everybody else. Yeah. You kind of get that, but also and that's yeah. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. So I was going to say, I was actually moving on to the next topic, which is really no, that there's sure. more than just keycaps that we're doing this yeah. for. Mm -hmm. two sure. So what kind of things would you normally see aside from, or including keycaps, what would you normally see run in a group by? So there's a couple of really primary things, I think, right? Uh, and that's keycaps and keyboards. There's also a for bunch sure. of other items that have and very likely will in the future be run as group buys again. Um, you got plates, PCBs, switches, housings for switches, stabilizers, mm -hmm. uh, cases for like, like keycaps. Cases for, yeah, for keyboards or, keyboards or like JTK trays. JTK is a keycap manufacturer, for those of you not in the know on that. I'm also, you're also seeing more and more group buys for different items. Uh, for example, desk mats. Or uh, recently, I just, I just ordered... Uh, my little key plushie. I think it's in your frame right now, Mr. Cal, Mr. Josh. So uh, there's there's kind of myriad things that can be ordered in this group buy model. So I guess next would kind of be how does it work, right? So we've we've talked about what is a group buy, why why do it, and what are the kind of things that we can we can actually order with a group buy. So how, so how does it work? You started off by saying there's an idea. So what happens after that? Uh, so for the community, the very next thing is that there's an interest check. But before that, uh, it's funny that I'm the one saying this and not you person who has actually done these. 
um, there's a bunch of idea development. There's a massive amount of development work that goes on before you ever get to an interest check. And that's changed a little bit over time. It used to be mm -hmm. a lot rougher of an idea, but now we're starting to develop to the phase where maybe group buys aren't going to be that required in some ways at some point in the nearish future, a couple of years near for we're any regular hobby. Starting to see some vendors move towards that where instead of doing a group buy where the, where you get, you know, if you're lucky, four or 500 people buying this one thing, and then they all put in all their money and they wait six to nine months or however long, and then it's all delivered out. We're seeing some people that are starting to try in stock where they've ordered it, you know, six or nine months ago. And then all of a sudden they say, hey, here's this thing, and everybody buys it, right? So... Anyways, yeah, that's that's our topic. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I mean, that's a valid thing, though, right? So there's this huge amount of development work that goes on for group buys, because that's what we're mm -hmm. definitely talking about now, right? And that's where we are right now. And we have been since the beginning of the hobby, effectively. So you've got this idea development, then you hit an interest check. And once there's an interest check, a public thing usually posted on Keep Talk, Geek Hack, uh, basically everywhere that there's Reddit, some, Discord, Reddit, yeah. Discord, maybe Mass Drop. Um, although yeah, not really interest checks there. There's um, more of like a voting to make this happen. There is. It's kind of an interesting platform. Yeah, but but either way, so there's this interest check phase, and, and that's where people get to give feedback to the people who created and developed the initial idea, and that's mm -hmm. when you start getting things like modifications to, if it's a keycap set, the set itself, what keycaps are offered in it, et cetera, and then you start to figure out where where these things are going to be distributed so vendors and proxies figure out what's a if proxy yeah so so a proxy <laughs> is basically a vendor that's region specific right so they may find a primary yeah. vendor in the u.s because we have the largest single market for a lot of things including keycaps and keyboards kits themselves mm -hmm. um with maybe the exception of china I, well, i'm sure that there's a lot in china so we definitely don't have the biggest manufacturing capacity for True. things yeah. at job shop levels of production um which is where we'd really find the keyboard setup in right now um for keycaps and i think we're gonna so go much. into that st the manufacturing process in a different episode more more in yeah. depth but yeah, yeah. it's kind of keeping us keeping us honest basics. for sure for sure mm -hmm. covering right. the basics right now and just yeah. doing a brief overview so the other okay, thing so go ahead no, no, no. Uh, so the other thing you get when you get into interest checks, right, is they may have already gotten uh, prototypes of if it's a board or something yeah. made in advance and posted that during the interest check. But it may just have been something like renders and they won't get to prototypes until they get past or in the middle of the interest check phase and before they do a group buy. Yeah. Right. So. So after this interest check portion, what happens is you then you've got a date when the group buy opens and it's, this has kind of changed uh, it used to be a couple of weeks. Now, typically, a lot of times they're running for a month or or if there's a limited quantity, you know, it's, you know, we've got 100 of these things once once they're all sold, then, you know, that's when it closes. Um, so the group buy actually happens where people give their money to the vendor and or, and or the individual running it. That's less common now. Um, but then there's a lot of you know, hype and and if you haven't gotten a prototype, then there's a prototyping phase or color matching, uh, all that all that kind of stuff. And then, so once that's closed, the vendor or the group by runner gives the money to the manufacturer and says, "Hey, here's this thing we want," and then they shepherd that through the process, working with the manufacturer. And then, you know, if you're if you're doing an okay job or or a very good job running your group by. Uh, you're going to have a lot of communication that happens along the way. Hey, there's a shipping delay or here's updates on the color match process, that kind of stuff. If you're talking keycaps, boards, hey, we've got PCBs in, they work, they're flashed, maybe they're in VIA, which we'll go into that kind of stuff later. Um, and then, you know, that once once the manufacturer finishes the product, that is sent to the vendor and or proxies, and then it is distributed out to the customer. And that uh, can take... Sometimes it's it's relatively quick, you know, desk mats are a couple of months, maybe uh, to, you know, there have been certain keyboards that years later are still not delivered. Right. So it, 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 can, it runs the, yeah. the 
I the think span you, there, but most are six to nine months. I think we it's run interesting in... to me. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, you go. I was going to say, it's interesting to me that in a in an economy, in a world that is becoming more and more on demand, instant, I want it now, that this kind of niche hobby has sprung up with the expectation that you're going to have to have some delayed gratification in a big way. And I think that's something that people that people new to the hobby get frustrated with because they're like well i want my stuff now i want to do this now yeah. i'm excited now i want to do this yeah. and i don't think it's um i don't think people do these on purpose to make people wait so long um but i think it is one of the realities of a group buy is that hey you may pay for something in january and not get it till september so or, or if you're planning this for grandma's birthday yeah. don't <laughs> consider yeah, it's, you, if you you're ordering your christmas gift in march right like right. and it and right. it might not get there in time <laughs> right yeah exactly and, or which, in the packaging you expected it to yeah which actually i think is a good segue into our last kind of point that we want to make because you asked about this delayed gratification and we've been talking about these long timelines josh can you talk about the risk the inherent risks associated with the group buy model yeah so uh, if you're if you're ordering something right and you're going to order it from even someone like mass drop right there's there's some kind of guarantee and the, and their guarantee is the least good if you're ordering it from some regular vendor and in stock item if they don't deliver that item you get your money back and that's a mm -hmm. that's a reasonable expectation but the duration of how group buys run and how buyer protection on paypal or through any of the other outlets works nine months later there's no reasonable expectation that you're going to get your money back in fact there have been group buys that have run that like what you've mentioned with things like years later that haven't come through some of those may or may not but if they don't you're just out the cash and yep. uh you got burned so that's the biggest risk the other risks are delays uh, we're a growing hobby still. And as we've been growing, these delays and risks have actually gotten considerably longer. Not have not only have the production timelines increased, but also the things that hold them up in the chain have have mm -hmm. gotten more and more well, they just they're more and more painful because of the timelines. And ironically, the people who are watching this video who don't actually already know what a group buy is. Uh, they're the ones who are going to encounter these things and feel the most burned from it because they don't mm -hmm. have experience to show that, hey, these things are happening. But there are ways that you can mitigate those risks, like choosing reputable vendors and choosing reputable group by runners and designers and everybody in that chain. And yeah. and that's that's one quick thing I want to say. That's That's not to say don't trust people right like you know because somebody always at one point in time it's their first buy right but that's that's where i think the vendors help is you know they're that storefront that they can say we're going to make sure that we will shepherd this product to delivery until the end so um so that leads me into a question without naming names or like throwing any anybody under the bus because we don't want to do that if i'm if I'm new to the keyboard hobby and this, and I, I'm really into something and I, f I find a group buy that I want to participate in and we know the group buy is, is good and they're, they're ready to start taking, you know, taking my money. What, what should I look for in a group buy that tells me this person or this, whoever's doing this is reputable? And what are some, some like red flags I should look out for that say, Hey, don't do this danger danger step back and 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 save myself pro considerable amount of money like into the hundreds of dollars so maybe the, thousands the, there's, yeah sometimes or thousands. thousands yeah i mean yeah. i may or may not be waiting on a 900 hundred dollar keyboard so you know that's <laughs> it's neither here nor there but um which it'll be soon Anyways. i know me too I'm so excited. Me too. <laughs> so uh, uh, there's a couple of things as far as uh, that you can say absolutely are good signs. Prototypes, 
um you know for from a keyboard perspective that's essentially an ex an expected thing now is to have a physical prototype to make sure that the design is appropriate which is considerable cost to the person designing it so it's it's a good show of faith number one and number two does the thing actually work is is important as well um in terms of like keycap sets do they have physical samples of the colors to match the keycaps too that's something that's very important um and also you know, to, to Josh's point, a reputable vendor, if they're a vendor, if they have a storefront, it's likely that they are going to deliver on the things. Now, there obviously are some more consistent than others, but, you know, the big names are trustable 99.999% of the time. So yeah, the, um, the likelihood that you will not get a product from one of the big name vendors, whether they're better or worse at the entire process, the likelihood that you won't get it is incredibly low. Yeah, like and, non-existent yeah. and to my knowledge hasn't actually ever happened. Yeah, not as of yet, you know. And, and I think one thing that I've, oh, I was going to say that one thing that I've noticed too when I've been part of group buys before with the big, with some bigger vendors, and this isn't, this isn't to anyway say that smaller vendors aren't, should not be trusted, but I've noticed that there is really good communication from the big vendors mm -hmm. on what, what stage of the process they're going through, what, you know, uh, what's going on with something if there are delays if there are changes and and they're really very good about communicating those things out to their their customers that's so, one thing that i've noticed so this actually is a really good pivot point because a our video is you know getting a, a little lengthy so thanks for <laughs> sticking with us but um that's a good point to say you know, communication is huge. If you're if you're thinking about joining a group buy for something, and it is a substantial financial investment for you, whether that means it's eighty dollars or you know eight hundred dollars, uh, you're entering into that with the knowledge that this thing will take a long time to get right. So most most individuals are completely fine with a good high level of communication that says even if it's no update, you know what the good thing is we haven't heard any of any any like delays. So um, if you're thinking about running a group by communication is the most key and critical thing that you can possibly offer. Um, sometimes even if that's just a, I don't know, right now, you know, I, I sent out an email and I'm waiting. Sometimes that's all people want to hear. So um, please keep that in mind. So but one thing that carries no risk to any of you is that you can absolutely go down below. Yeah, and, I, don't, I don't know where it is on the screen and and hit the and hit the subscribe. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen like and it, hit that subscribe it. button, ring the bell. And then the we can all stay in touch. Bell, you want to see our see more of these crazy videos um, like subscribe. Yeah. I hope it's been and, uh, informative. And if you want in the comments, you know, make sure you ask us for different topics that you want to hear about. So definitely. We'd love to hear your comments. Love to hear any ideas on additional content that you want to see uh, comments on your group by experiences and what you've, you guys have, mm -hmm. have gone through or um, good or bad. Yeah, um, that's where you yeah. can get salty. If you want We'd love to try and be guys. positive, but you know, we want to hear about both. Yeah. So. Thanks for watching. Do that thing where you like it or subscribe or i don't know how youtube works whatever it's fine <laughs> things and stuff all right thanks guys tuning out thanks everyone bye